We've got uh, two shows to talk about later on, but the big surprise that Tony Khan got for Sting is the way it was described. And boy, did they have a weird way of promoting that this afternoon. I was looking at the uh, the daily update, and Tony Schiavone said something like, this is something that's never been given to a person in wrestling before. I guess not. And I'm like, what are they talking about? And the answer was, Ric Flair appeared. Ric Flair's never been given to a person before? Well, I don't know that. I mean, that was the way it was described earlier this afternoon. It was kind of weird wording. Yeah, it is weird wording. But it was Ric Flair, Dave. I mean, there have been Ric Flair surprises many times. Yes. Um, yeah, Ric Flair showed up on TV, on AEW TV for the first time. Big surprise. Um, I know that uh, he was going to go there. What was it about? Um, over it was it was it was right when that um, Dark Side of the Ring thing came out that he was going to go there. And I think I don't know this, but I was assuming that he was going to go as the manager of Andrade. But he and Tony Khan had a verbal deal, and then after Dark Side came out, you know they it was not the right time, and. Uh, so they saved it for now, and he he gave the impression he's going to be on, you know, several shows. You know, not just— That this. was the question. Like, is he a regular now? I mean, he said that— I hope uh, not regular. Regular, I don't think that's a good idea for him to be a regular, but to— I don't know, man. On, he said that—he uh, mentioned March, because I think he thought that Revolution was in March, which and it, it pro- may very and it well probably be. is. It probably is. Yeah. And he said, uh, you know, I'd be honored if you allowed me to stick around and go on this ride with you. So that sounded like he's going to be around with Sting pretty regularly. Yeah, I mean, I I would bring him to select cities, but I wouldn't. I don't see a reason to put him on TV every week. But you know, again, um, it's the contract year, and I mean, Rick, you know, you know, it's the contract year, and I think that they're really uh, trying to hot shot as many stars for ratings purposes because of um, you know the name value and things like that, but. By doing that, you're you're also aging the show and and nostalgia, you know. Nostalgia usually is when it comes to TV ratings is usually a a short drug, not a long term thing. So, um, I mean, I like you know, I mean Rick Rick on the show intermittently, you know, probably could help a little bit, but I don't think that it's a good idea to him as a weekly character. But um, you know, as far as with the Sting countdown. Um, you know, maybe being on the pay per views that Sting is on, like the uh, the show in Los Angeles. I mean, I could see I could see him being in Sting's corner for that. That makes sense. You know, get one spot in where he chops somebody. It's easy pop. I mean, I don't see anything wrong with that. And um, you know, um, and of course, part of the you know, I, I thought it would be really good to have him and some of those guys, Lex Luger, Nikita Koloff. You know, the the guys from that era, um, Arn Anderson. Um, those type of guys have some of those guys on, um, you know, the Steiner brothers, people like that have those, some, some of those people on, at least Scott Steiner. I don't know if Rick's a good idea right now, but, um, you know, have some of those people on the, the, the March show when Sting has his final appearance, you know, and other, other people from that are still alive that people associate with Sting, you know, from more, more from WCW. I mean, it was funny when Tony Schiavone, like not funny. Tony Schiavone acted like the Flair Sting match in 1988 is what put TBS Wrestling on the map. That's a little cringeworthy, I would say, because TBS Wrestling started in 1976, and um, as far as like who put that on the map, I mean, the only there's only two people that you could give that to, and you know the 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 main one I would say is Dusty Rhodes because he was the big star when they really started drawing big ratings in the late seventies. Um, you could argue wrestling two who was also a very big star there, but that was be- wrestling two was the top guy really before the thing, like, like they were in some markets and, and everything, but when they really started getting into like 30 million homes, you know, 20 million, 30 million homes. Um, I guess, let me think about this. It was, uh, I believe 30 million homes um, in, by the early 80s. So that's Dusty. Dusty was really the big star when, when um, I know when we started watching, when we started getting it was 79. And it was very clear, you know, Dusty Rhodes and Ole Anderson, you know, was the big feud. But Dusty was the, you know, Dusty was the man, you know. It wasn't Ric Flair. Ric Flair came, you know, later. Well, I, I know, know what you mean because coming up next was Sting and Darby coming out for a promo. 
And uh, Sting thanks everybody, and then Tony introduces his big gift, which is Ric Flair. Tony Schiavone introduces, not yeah. Tony Khan. Well, Tony Schiavone introduced Tony Khan's gift. And uh, honestly, I don't know if they clued Sting in. I presume they had to. But man, that guy did an amazing job acting like, oh my God, I cannot believe you brought yeah, out Ric Flair. Nobody, nobody expected Ric Flair. So he uh, he comes out and Flair does his promo talking about their uh, their famous match, which now by the way is fifty five minute match. So it was forty five minute match. What's Rick? I mean, Rick. Yes, you know. Um, so he puts him over, and then he he did he did bring up that they were head to head with WrestleMania. Gives him a chop for old times' sake. Fans love Flair, and then out come Christian and Luchasaurus, and Christian and, makes, and Nick Wayne. He makes fun of Flair, saying that. Uh, you know, we can at Bernie's the reference. I know you're not dead, but I also know there's no God because if there was, you'd have been dead 20 years ago. And he, he said, made reference to having a black liver, which he probably has. Want to know how Darby's arm was feeling? Said, take a look at this belt, something you'll never be a champion. And he said, you know, why wait for revolution? I want Sting on right now. Therefore. Get a partner for full gear, which is not right now, by the way. Yeah. So it is uh, apparently a six-man at full gear. I hope Darby's okay. He had a giant sling on his arm. Yeah. And, uh, and Nick was there. I guess his tooth is fixed. I actually don't know that for sure, but presumably. So uh, six-man signed for full Sting, gear. Sting, Darby, and a mystery partner who obviously, you know, the tease right now is that it's Adam Copeland, although Adam Copeland turned it down. Yes. Yeah, but that's the tease, which, you know, actually that's probably a match that, that makes sense for all of them, you know, but, um, you yeah, it does. It's just a match that makes sense because Sting, you know, you don't want Sting, you know, um, I mean, Darby's a good person to have in there, but my God, well, how, how ready can Darby be by November 18th? I mean, I saw that thing that he landed on his shoulder. That was like no picnic at all. No. So then Jericho does a sit-down promo, and he says, man, I was hurting everywhere after that match with Hobbs, mostly my ego. Time for self-reflection. Should I step back or should I get stronger? And I know Don has a lot of people in his family, but I got a lot of friends too, some of them even bigger than Will Hobbs. I need to make a call. So probably... He's talking um, about Paul White? I think he's talking about Paul White, yeah. And so I could see like Jericho, Omega, and Paul White against um, Hobbs, Takeshi, and Sammy Guevara, maybe do that, yeah. Or or a tag match without Sammy, depending. I don't know how. Like I don't know what state Sammy's in right now, but I mean, I know that he was he would be hopeful for being back by November. I mean, he was hopeful of being back last week. And he wasn't back this week, but um, you know, November's still several weeks off. November eighteenth, still several weeks off. So, man, I don't know what happened at that point, but the next two matches just struggled to get heat. And to their credit, Young Bucks and Hangman got them about three-quarters of the way through. Yeah, they were chanting, this is awesome, although it was, you know, the... Uh, dude, the first half of this match, I mean, this crowd was just sitting there. It was Matt Hardy in the ring. And it's it was... Like... Well, it was, a, it was supposed to be a babyface match, but Matt was... was uh, he was acting aggressive. He pissed off Hangman and Matt, and then they kind of played the heel role. And then as soon as Nick started his comeback, I mean, the place got into it big time. And Hangman hit the buckshot on Zay. They double super kicked Matt and Jeff off the apron, hit the BT trigger on Zay, pinned him, and uh, turned into a really good match. And then afterwards, the video appeared on the big screen. So, so is, is, is Jeff hurting? Because Jeff was, I mean, he did do the swanton for a, for a real good near fall, which people bought because Nick, you know, the... They, I will say this for the the the, um, the camera work was really good because I mean I knew that Nick was about to make the save but they shot it and and you know and everyone's shooting it this way WWE does as well where you where that uh, that save comes from out of the camera you don't see it come until the last second which is a cool cool visual but um, Jeff didn't do I mean like, like Matt worked almost the entire match except for when Zay did all the hot stuff and you know Jeff did. You know, just the swanton and very little else. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.